Now let's do our case studies for the parathyroid gland. And let me start with the hyperparathyroid disease. We have a 48 year old woman presenting with a three day history of fatigue, hypersomnolence and constipation. Fatigue, hypersomnolence and constipation. That's too much calcium. Too much calcium is gonna sedate you. Too much calcium is gonna sedate you. Past medical history, she had migraine headaches one or two attacks per month, calcium oxalate renal stone five weeks ago, and it passed spontaneously. So can you identify four manifestations of hyperparathyroidism in this case? Fatigue, hypersomnolence, constipation, and the calcium containing renal stones are the most important manifestations of hypercalcemia secondary to hyperparathyroidism in this patient. Can you identify abnormal lab findings consistent with hyperparathyroidism? Yes. High serum concentrations of calcium, high concentrations of parathyroid hormone, and abnormally low serum phosphate all are characteristic of hyperparathyroidism. What's the most likely cause of hyperparathyroidism in this case? Since thoracic and abdominal computed tomography CT scans were negative, and there are no signs that a tumor has spread, the region of uh, abnormal growth in the parathyroid glands is probably an adenoma or hyperplasia. So search for a parathyroid adenoma, most probably this is the case. Would you expect that the patient has primary or secondary hyperparathyroidism? Since the serum calcium level is high and the serum phosphate concentration is low, the patient apparently has a tumor in one of the parathyroid glands that is called primary. That is called primary. Serum calcium is generally low or normal and serum phosphate is high in patients with secondary disease. So this patient has a primary hyperparathyroidism. What the most appropriate therapy for this patient? If the tumor is not cancerous, if it is just adenoma, surgical removal of the adenoma is the best treatment. If the tumor is cancerous, then surgical removal of the tumor followed by radiation will be appropriate. Hydration and the use of bisphosphonates to control serum calcium levels until the patient goes into surgery will also be necessary. Don't forget adequate hydration. Adequate hydration in hyperparathyroid disease, very important. Adequate hydration to protect the kidneys from the effect of hypercalcemia, to protect against the development of renal stones. Don't forget hydration. Why is it advisable in this patient to replace hydrochlorothiazide with another medication? Remember, thiazide diuretics are among the causes that increase serum calcium, and this patient already has hypercalcemia, so he better or she better not use uh, thiazide diuretics. Our case study for the hypoparathyroid disease, we have a 52-year-old female whose chief complaints are recurrent and painful muscle spasms of the hands and feet and dry scaly puffy skin. She also states that I have not been myself for the past four to five weeks. She said that she has felt very irritable, aggressive and even combative in recent weeks. These are manifestations of low calcium. Remember, high calcium sedates you, low calcium irritates you, it's going to make you irritable. Which clinical manifestations in this patient's history can be linked to hypoparathyroidism? Well, recurrent and painful spasms, this is very characteristic of the hands and feet, carpopedal spasms, dry and scaly skin, and hyperirritability. Identify the abnormal lab test results that are consistent with hypoparathyroidism in this case. We have low serum calcium, low magnesium concentration, high serum phosphate, low parathyroid hormone, and low urinary phosphate output. These uh, are all characteristic of hypoparathyroidism in this case. What the most likely cause of hypoparathyroidism in this patient? The most likely cause is decreased release of parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland due to a serum magnesium deficiency. Remember, 
magnesium is nor is important for a normal parathyroid function if you have hypomagnesemia your parathyroid is not going to function normally and you will develop hypocalcemia consequently how might this patient be managed pharmacologically it's imperative that this patient be managed with magnesium salt therapy so you give her intravenous magnesium sulfate or magnesium oxide or oral magnesium oxide furthermore since the serum calcium level is approaching panic concentration that's very low less than 6.5 then calcium salts are given to this patient and also don't forget to supplement her with folate and vitamin b12 these are required to treat her macrocytic anemia